Hello, this video is going to show how we can perform unit testing with Texas Instruments Code Composer and the TMS 320F28335. This is a very popular device and this is the board that I have currently connected to my laptop. Now the starting point is Code Composer Studio. And I have Code Composer Studio version 10 and inside here I have a, a number of projects and this is the one here that I'm particularly interested in. We can expand it and we can see we have a number of source files here. So let's check first of all we can build this. So let's do a rebuild and there we can see that successfully built our executable. So I want to be able to test some of this code and let's start by testing this particular file here. And as we can see this is reasonably uh, simple code but uh, I'd like to go in and test this particular function here to ensure that when I run it, it actually sets these bits inside this particular register to these values. So how can I go about doing that? All right, well, the first thing to do is I'm going to open the Eldre launcher. I've configured it to use the Code Composer Studio for the C2000, and I'm going to run what we call the, the build import. And the build import, I've configured it to run my build.bat. That will simply call the, the gmake on the project. And so let's go in and run this. So here we can see the build has started. It's doing exactly the same as what we saw inside Code Composer. It's listened to the build, and we can see we have a list of all the source files. Associated with that, we have a list of the include paths. And also we have the preprocessor symbols. Well, there aren't any. Well, let's check to see whether there are any hidden symbols that the compiler knows about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all exclude all the files from compiler preprocessing. And this is the file I'm interested in. So let me go and add that file for compiler preprocessing. And let's run the compiler preprocessor. That's basically compiling the file and basically saving all the, the defines to an external file that we can then pass. And in this particular case, there are no defines that are actually important here. So let's go now and start to test this particular file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that single file and open that with our unit testing tool, which is tbrun. And inside tbrun, I'm now going to start to run the analysis. So it's going to analyze this particular file. And we just need to wait for this to complete and then we'll be able to start unit testing. So let's just go back into Code Composer, and this is the function that we want to test. And as we can see, it we want to ensure that it set these particular bits to 0, 0, and 1, 1. All right, let's go back into tbrun, and this is still just doing the instrumentation now. Wait for this to finish and then we'll go and create a sequence. So I'm going to create a sequence here, and I'm going to call it uh, UT for unit test DSP 2833XPWM. All right, and I want code coverage because I want to make sure have I got the full structural coverage. I want to create stubs in case any functions are missing. I want to create user globals instead in case there are any variables that are missing. I want to use uh, the TV run defaults, and that's probably OK. Let's do continue. Right, first thing we can see is it's added a user global. So there must have been an external decorations of GPIO control regs. And so basically, we've created a variable that we can now control. And we've initialized it to zero. Right, so first of all, I just need to do a couple of settings here. So I just need to change that to this particular path here. OK, that's good. And then there's another path I need to change because I'm working on a single file rather than a set. So I've set those two up. Now let's do a test build and check does this build. And as we can see, it does. So now we can start to do some testing. So let's start with this function we looked at. And let's go and create a test case. So I'm just going to go continue on here. And there we can see we have the outputs. So I'm expecting one, tab one, tab one, tab, no, zero, wasn't it? It was a zero and zero. And then the inputs, well, 
I want those to be something other than 0 and 1 to make sure this has done something. So let's set them to 99. Right, now let's execute this on the target. That's now generated the harness. It's built it using the, uh, the TI compiler. And now it's connecting to the target. Now this is a little slow because first of all, the debugger is an XDS 100. That's not particularly fast. And then I'm also using uh, the flash rather than the RAM. And so it takes a bit of time to actually erase that and to program it. But as we can see, that's executed and I've got the expected values. So that's excellent. So let's uh, just wait for this now to find out uh, what coverage we've obtained. So just wait. And there we can see we have got 100% coverage for that function. Well, these functions are very simple. There's no branches in them at all. There's just inputs and expected outputs. So what I could do is I could get the tool to automatically generate some test cases. So in this particular case, what it's done is it's looked at the code, it's looked at interesting inputs, and it's then used those. It's generated the harness. It's executing it now. It's going to get the results from the target. It's then going to save the outputs, and it's going to execute it a second time. And the second time, it's going to check, did it get the same outputs as the first time that it ran? So again, it's going to execute now the second time. So once again, we've got this slow debugger, and we also have this um, running it in RAM. If I wanted, I could actually use uh, an older version of Code Composer Studio, and I could actually use the, the simulator, and that would run a, a bit faster. So I could actually use that for developing the test cases, and then maybe overnight execute all my tests on the actual hardware. But that's not too slow, and that's now executed. And as we can see, I've now executed all my tests, they've all passed. And so if we look at a particular test, we can see we've got the expected outputs here. So really, I ought to go through and check these. And also, I can actually put in a description here. But the main thing here is I've now executed all my tests on the target, and I've got a 100% statement coverage for that. OK, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can perform unit testing using Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio and an F28335 target. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.